out of YouTube. What lovely weather. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. 41 degrees. That's the high for the next 10 days. Not the best weather. And the snow has been light, which is good. This was from a couple of days ago. Even though I rolled this all out nice and flat, Heidi decided to run it over again, then it froze. So I'm going to have to clear out the garage. Finally, huh? Everybody's like, what? Yeah, I'm not gonna mess with that big disaster over there necessarily, but I am gonna take this stuff and I'm gonna rearrange it. I'm gonna try to put it back in the corner. I might have to put some of it in the basement. Uh, this wood, I might have to move to the back of the garage. Uh, but the reason is, is because I've gotta take this truck cap off. Yeah, why do I have to take truck cap off? Well, that's not it. I also have to take out the camera and the CB and the bed rug that's back there. Yeah, why am I doing all that? The truck is officially sold. Uh, so a lot of people ask, well, how much did you sell it for? I was asking 7,000 and uh, the guy asked me, if I remove some of that stuff, he don't want it. He's going to use it for a work truck. Uh, what kind of deal I cut him? And I told him I'd $6,500. If I take the cap off, the bed rug out, that monitor off, of course, that rear view camera that's on the back of the caps coming off, and the uh, CB, uh, which I was going to leave all that in there, um, I would knock it down to $6,500. And, and he went ahead and went for it. I knew that it would sell right away. It's a good deal. It's a good truck. Uh, you guys that watch me, you know, I, I mean, I take pretty good care of this stuff and uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, you know, the deal. I had to get into that other truck. Uh, we had to get into something that was four wheel drive and we decided to go with something newer. As far as uh, the pricing on the truck, I mean, I really knew already. Um, out of this front yard, uh, about six years ago, maybe, yeah, about six years ago, I sold this identical truck in every single way except the colors were reversed. Instead of it being uh, blue top, blue bottom, white stripe, it was a white top, white bottom, blue stripe. And it was a 96 and it had 63,000 miles on it. It was my stepdad's truck and it was a Florida truck. So it had minimal, minimal rust, even less than mine. Uh, the only thing with his is that uh, a load had shifted in the bed and had bent that front panel up against the cab, which I bent back for him. And uh, the cap, the clear coat was starting to come off the cap. And other than that, it was all stock. It was 100% stock. Well, I, of course, have more features with mine and I've upgraded everything, even though it has a lot more miles. You know, these people get in them and drive them. They, I mean, you can't tell that. You can't tell. This thing runs really, really good. So I knew whenever I sold his out of the front yard, his sold for a little bit more than mine. I had $7,200 on it, and it sold in a week's time in the front yard in the middle of the summer whenever I did sell it. So I knew that I was real close on the price. And uh, as far as uh, the garage, I'm just uh, rambling on because I don't want to do it. <laughs> Let me get to work. Well, it's getting there. Not moving very fast, but it's getting there. And these used to be in the basement. Um, they used to be identical in size and shape. And I cut this one down uh, to use out here. We pulled them out of our freezer room and I brought them out here because when I was doing small engine work, I needed to store parts. And you can see, I still have all kinds of moped parts. There's cylinders in here, uh, throttles, handlebars, wheels, uh, carburetor parts, magnetos, cylinder heads, uh, shocks, hell here's brand new, shipped direct from Italy, Piaggio pedals um, that go on mopeds. Uh, here's a, a, a manual for uh, Motore Marina Franco. Um, this is a Polinori carburetor. There's a Polinori air box. Yeah, I mean, I used to do all this stuff, and these are some of the parts. Um, I've got a whole bunch of decals that probably are desirable for someone. Uh, Target LX decals. These are from the 90s, originals from the 90s. Uh, these are original from the early 2000s. Yeah. Kind of cool, huh? 
But I don't do that work anymore. I haven't done that work in a long time. So I'm gonna call some of my friends and tell them to just come take this stuff. And then this section over here, uh, there's mower parts and automotive parts in there. Lots of stuff. Uh, of course, I I'm willing to just give all that stuff away. I don't need any of it. Uh, especially now that uh, we're getting rid of this truck. Um, I had coils, extra coils for it. I had extra distributor caps. I had uh, extra thermostats, extra belts. I had all kinds of extra stuff. Matter of fact, I need to get up here and I have uh, an extra driver's window with the wing window there. I don't know if you can tell. It's just kind of hidden behind the Yagi antenna that I use for the Wii Boost. So, yeah, just, just don't need this stuff anymore. Well, it's starting to look like I remember it. <laughs> A little bit. Not, not completely. <laughs> All this stuff here would have been here. But, and that wouldn't have looked like that either. But it's, it's getting a little bit closer. So, uh, you can see here's the uh, strap situation. I, I just used these, um, well, I don't know, motorcycle tie-downs, whatever you want to call them. I've had them for years and years and years and years. <laughs> But they, uh, they work just fine. And then what I do is um, I'll back the truck in after I've loosened the cap up and, and got it to where it's ready to remove, which i got to do that work now. And then these pieces of wood here, they have holes in them and they have these slings here. Well, these go underneath the cap. These straps actually go underneath and uh, then these reach on the outside. So anyways, it just works. It, it works out just fine which I'll show you here in a minute but the main thing is, is I forgot how tall this truck was and I do remember that I had some issue when I was backing it in I don't remember if it was underneath this cap or if it was this part right here um, I, I think I have to release this and push it back farther or, or something I, I don't remember what it is but I, I do remember there was some sort of an issue so I'll uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the the key I'll open this up and I've got to remove all the clamps and I think there's a couple of screws in there and uh, then I've got to disconnect the the wiring that runs up to the dome light and there's wiring that uh, goes up obviously to the camera the power for the camera uh, I think they run together matter of fact but we're getting there okay so Heidi brought home pizza and a sub Ooh. Ooh pizza oh no chicken. Sub. chicken chicken and, and wings. chicken and wings she oh, thinks she thinks we're on a diet already, but we're not. <laughs> That's soon. Okay, so she helped me get the uh, truck in here. She backed it up after I got it so far. Um, she backed it up the rest of the way. I'll just show you what I'm doing here. Pretty simple. If you guys have a cap, again, it's not hard to do. So you can see these straps now are hooked to these boards, and uh, they're supported by the rafters. They are leaning a little bit forward because. I did underestimate how much room I need so I'm right up against that stuff but it's not pushing on it real hard or anything so I have to hook up the other two straps on the other side and then at that point I just uh, pull these tight and uh, kind of lift the cap a little bit it'll shift back and that's it I just uh, drive the truck back out it's pretty straightforward all right so the lighting's really crappy but you kind of get the idea here it's all lifted it's basically off and, and all I had to do is just take my hands and just lift as I tightened the strap and it supported it so go ahead Hyde pull it out Heidi had to slide in there I couldn't get my big butt in there hold on This thing's catching in the corner over there. Pull, pull ahead real slow. Come on, going. All right, you're good. Go slow. Yeah, I didn't get that side as high as I should have. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna see if I can sneak over here. <laughs> so you can see here that's it that's all it takes all right I'm clear go ahead and pull forward
You're good. And there's the naked truck. Yeah, you can see how heavy that tent is on the back window. That's why we didn't get this other one tented. Yeah, you're you're clear. You're good. I'll call this guy and let him know that his truck is ready to be picked up whenever he wants. And there's the camp. Garage is relatively usable. What I do is I, I raise this even higher. And uh, Heidi used to be able to park her car under it. Well, just make sure whenever you uh, put it up for sale that... Um, you make sure that you say that they need help because I'm not helping. You didn't help today except I, for driving the no, truck. No, no, I'm talking about putting it on somebody's oh, back of their truck. Yeah. I'm not helping. Yeah, yeah. Neither are you. <laughs> You're uh, not. <laughs> oh, I can lift it. <laughs> yeah, you can lift it, but that's benefiting somebody else. Yeah. You got your back to take care of. True. True debt. <laughs> All right, so we're going in the house, going to get something to eat at, and uh, I'll pick this up tomorrow. So we'll uh, show you what the truck looks like completely naked, even more than it already is, in the daylight. <laughs> so next morning, a little windy, a little chilly. It's not as cold as it was yesterday, though, but it is about 34 right now. And uh, you can see what the truck looks like without a cap. It seems funny. We did buy it with a cap on it. And then uh, we removed the cap. We went camping with it and, uh, I don't know, a couple other things. But it, it always looks funny without a cap to me, these trucks, because I've had one so long and they've all had caps on them for the most part. So I'm going to uh, do the last little bit that I need to here. Oh, I forgot Heidi was in here. Uh, the guy apparently is going to use it for work. So I went ahead and folded down the back for him here because... He's talking about throwing tools back there. I said, you know that back folds down. He says, oh yeah, I figured that it did. So <laughs> I went ahead and did that for him. And uh, I've got to remove this stuff. I got to remove the CB and I got to remove this uh, thing up here. Ooh, it's cold. Ooh, it took a little longer than I expected. So uh, yeah, then I've got to run up to the bank, do some errands. Um, you can see the mileage there. It's something else I had to, to get on a bill of sale. 185, 343. I'll remember that. And I forgot. I gotta open my garage door to do all this. You can see what it takes to install a bed rug inside the uh, the vehicle. Um, it's just Velcro across the top. You got Velcro that's you know just a few tabs. There's Velcro all down the side here, and then on the tailgate the same. Uh, Velcro there and other than that that's all that holds those bed rugs in there but I'm telling you that they're really held in there you can see when I first got it I had to make those repairs uh, to where the fifth wheel rails were mounted in here from the previous owner and uh, looks like it held up pretty well uh, of course there is some some rust going on in here <laughs> nothing crazy but there is some rust same with on the rail yeah, it's going to seem odd driving it with, uh, like I say, with really nothing on here. I bet you this truck is light. I bet you this thing would just spin the tires to no end with no weight back here. But I'm not going to do that. These are really good tires. I don't want to shorten their life any more than uh, just driving them would do. All right. Just want to give you an update. I'm going to take that crap from inside out and... Uh, that way this thing will be all free and clear oh i'll have to pull the tags off too well here it is all naked uh monitor gone cb gone this is the way he's getting it like i said other than the tags this is exactly how we're going to deliver it to him i think he's going to be happy i think he already is happy <laughs> so uh yeah i gotta do some errands with this and then uh, come home and pull the tags off and uh give the owner a call and let him know to come and get it Mm-hmm. you're gonna miss it all right, guys, so the truck is gone. It's adios. Uh, the guy stopped by just on the day that uh, he said he was going to. Um, just to let you know, uh, just to put it out there, the, we weren't holding the truck for anybody. It, the guy wanted to write a personal check, and personal checks you got to be really cautious of. I made sure that that check not only cleared in my account, but I called Chase Corporate to let me know when those funds was collected from his bank chain that's over in the Youngstown area. Um, I don't know, I think they have 15 banks over there. 
once those funds actually showed up at Chase and Chase actually collected them and it was a seasoned check uh, that it could be freed up. Uh, this guy was just old school. He wasn't trying to scam anybody. He does all his business through check writing. Everything that he does, he writes checks for and he does it through a personal account because he doesn't have an LLC or any of that. He just does it his way. He has an old flip phone, but the phone number that he has, he's had for years. The address that he has, he's had for years. His brother lives right up the street. His brother's lived there for years. And I have an extra set of keys. We not only got the title changed over immediately, but we both had signed in front of a witness and also had notarized uh, a bill of sale that basically showed the transaction was happening. I had mine copy. He has his copy. Um, we covered all our bases. So we weren't holding the vehicle for anybody. I, I did let everybody know if there was something that happened with this check and it took too long. Uh, you know, if the truck's still sitting in the yard, it's for sale. I had a couple people contact me on YouTube. We had about four people contact or five people contact me through um, social media as far as, I shouldn't say social media, but like Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. And uh, then we also had uh, two people stop by the house. And again, that's with it only sitting in the yard 48 hours and being listed on those sites for 48 hours. Um, yeah, that, that thing went fast. So now that that truck's gone, uh, we're regretting it. Oh my God, we should have kept it as a backup truck. Not. Why would I want it to sit in the driveway and rust? I mean, as it was, we hardly used it. We only used it for towing. We had to upgrade for peace of mind. Yeah, that's the other um, thing. Uh, we uh, were just putting, going to be putting too much money to make it our full-time travel vehicle. Right. There's, towing vehicle. There's nobody that there's, in their right mind that would have just went out on the road. Let me rephrase that. Because there are people that do that, and they make great YouTube videos because of all the drama. Nobody that's conscious that of mechanical issues and, and how important that is would go out on purpose with a vehicle that has almost 190,000 miles <laughs> and start towing a trailer all over the country. Uh, we weren't going to do that. So for me to make those upgrades, I mean, there was, there was a lot of things that were coming into play and a, a lot of money. It, a new engine, around $3,000. I probably would have put in a little bit bigger camshaft in at the time too. Give it just a little bit more power. Cause that's just the way I am. Uh, at that point, uh, then I wanted to do a mass air flow conversion to help with gas mileage and make it uh, perform just slightly better. Uh, that would have been about $1,600. Uh, then we would have done a gear vendors overdrive unit, which would make that an eight speed transmission in the truck, which helps with the towing up to overdrive. But towing in overdrive, I would have gotten the same gas mileage, which the majority of the time we're towing in overdrive. Uh, so it would have just been the under gears that would have helped out. That's $3,000 for that unit. And the big one, uh, four-wheel drive. I would have had to get a four-wheel drive transmission, which we would have probably got, even if we stuck with two-wheel drive, we would have probably put a different transmission in there. And um, then the four-wheel drive conversion. Then, if I did all that, and you can add it up, I mean, that money's getting piled up there pretty <laughs> quick, then I'd have to do the body work just to make things just look a little bit nicer for ourselves. That's just the way we feel about it. If all those things were done, yes, we would have kept the truck. And yeah, we would have been happy with it. But the other thing I want to address is <laughs> I'm a big fan. I've been, drive I've been driving them for more than a decade of those old body style Fords. However, I know absolutely for sure that it doesn't compete with these new trucks. I mean, it's got its place. The only thing it competes in these new trucks is you get a lot of comments on it. People like those things. And it's very easy to work on. It's inexpensive. The parts are everywhere. You can find them anywhere, really. As far as comparing the two engines, and that's really what we're talking about here, um, engine and transmissions, uh, you know, that that's an old tried and true solid engine and it's good and it does a good job but to say that it's better than this new engine just because the new engine sounds a little different and 
it runs a little bit different it operates in a different range that's just crazy I mean as a mechanic I am a mechanic for you guys that don't know that I am a mechanic I, I was a mechanic when I was in the army I worked on cars prior to going in the army I worked on cars when I got out of the army I work on cars all the time my other channel that's what I do is repairs a lot of them are on cars um, and then I was a small engine mechanic too you know I know what to look for and I'm telling you that over the years this engine's been out for quite some time and it's got more horsepower it's got more torque it gets better gas mileage I don't care if it's got more gadgets inside that just makes it nice that's just extra niceties and the way I compare it is these guys that are saying that saying all oh, that old 460 that that's better maybe you should have you know what you should have got is a power stroke power strokes the best one out there should have got the power stroke or why did you buy a diesel why don't you get that new 67 diesel and that's a pretty decent engine too you know if that's the case everybody would be driving model t's because they were the easiest to work on and they were the most reliable and all that other stuff forget it just forget about it so heidi's been driving this thing for about a thousand miles now I'll let you know still to this day i have drove that truck on our test drive only part of the test drive then i let heidi jump in the seat and drive it back the rest of the way and then i drove it home when we purchased it that is it hey turned around the driveway yeah i turned around the driveway once <laughs> I, i've been letting her drive it i i want her to break it in because i know how i would drive it and there's nothing wrong with that to some extent but i'd kind of like to not do it I, i'd rather it now that it's a thousand miles i might actually get into it a little bit and want to drive it um and as far as the, uh heidi driving it, it it that was just kind of the thing that we were doing for the time being we don't want her driving it back and forth to work any more than she has to um cost too much and gas yeah <laughs> even though it's getting a lot better get she has driven my old f-250 the old 460 truck back and forth to work whenever she her car was down or but not every day for a long time yeah for over a month yeah she only drove it for i think a week or a week and a half yeah. and it used a decent amount of gas it was a gas hog but yeah this one here she's She's not used to that, especially going from really her Honda. Uh, that that car got a crap load of mileage, uh, or got a crap load of miles per gallon. Just you know, drive back and forth. That's like a thirty mile per gallon vehicle. It was about thirty five. Yeah, <laughs> it was just a little Civic. Yeah. Um, and even the uh, Sable that we have, the Mercury. I mean, it it does a lot better in the truck. So the only reason she's driving that is because we were looking to sell this truck and. Um, try to find maybe another vehicle which we're still looking but we like to sell her sable uh, you know she'll drive that probably uh for the time being but we'll continue to look until that till her sable sells um you know it's the the truck was bought to tow the rv that's the whole reason and occasionally whenever i go somewhere just like in my old truck i might run to the store and come back that's about it or run to the well fast food place but kind of on that diet thing so I can't do that. So Heidi's been driving it. What do you think about it? I like it. I just uh, got out of a Ford Escape run to town with my mom. Yeah, her mom's got a new. And how old is that? One it's year? 18. Oh, it's 2018 Ford she Escape. She got it this year. She got it this year or yeah. last year? Or no, early this year. Or the early this year. Um, it is so small. Yeah. <laughs> The steering wheel small <laughs> everything about it i have to drive my car tomorrow and it's gonna be small <laughs> you're gonna be on the ground yeah i know one. you're gonna feel like you're on the ground i don't even know how to back it up or anything <laughs> i don't have any cameras yeah <laughs> you have to use this thing that they've it's been putting the on mirrors. cars because it's rearview mirror yeah that's um she's she's been driving a lot and uh, again it's put the mileage on it um as far as uh stuff that we got to do to it a lot of the stuff that we want to add to the truck we we can't because she was driving it so now that it's here i'll be able to shoot some video and do some installation if the weather the weather's you know we're getting into that time of year it's weird we've got a lot and of once rain once it gets it all installed then i'm driving it again <laughs> she thinks <laughs> <laughs> she, she won't she won't i know she won't but the uh uh we got some mud flaps for her. we got to order some uh uh floor mats we need to get floor mats for it uh, there's a lot of stuff that I need to do as far as just towing. Um, we've got uh, a hitch. We need to get the drop hitch for it. Just to let you guys know, I, we talked about that previous, and I had some people commenting saying, well, you know they make two-and-a-half-inch drop receivers that you can put a weight distribution on. 
Yeah, they do, but they don't make, as far as I can find so far, if you guys know of one that's different, I need like a 10-inch drop that I can put a Reese head on there for trunnion bars. Um, I might end up buying a new system, but still, I, I need a 2.5-inch shank to go into the receiver, and it's got to drop 10 inches. Uh, I, I could probably get away with 9, maybe, but 10 inches would definitely be safe, and that's with a 3-inch height on the ball head. Um, there's just not a lot out there. Uh, the nine inch uh, they make, but it's two inch. It's a two inch, so I got to put that receiver adapter. Probably gonna have to run that. I I, I don't want to, but here's the thing. Uh, Heidi's been looking at new RVs. <laughs> we've both been looking we've, at new okay. RVs. We've both been looking at new RVs. Um, we we've not even come close mm -hmm. to making any decision on any level whatsoever. No. But uh, that's what we said about the truck. <laughs> A year and a half ago, mm -hmm. we talked about looking at the, a new truck, and it took us a year and a half uh, to to get into this. So now that we're talking and looking at new RVs, uh, maybe a year from now, a year and a half from now, maybe, maybe, possibly, not real sure. But as far as the other stuff for the truck, uh, we got some vent visors for it. Again, we're just trying to make it the way that we want it. I'm going to try to get. The hardest part is trying to make it not cluttered up like the last one as far as the dash. And I've Good got... Luck with that. Yeah. I, since the guy didn't want the cap, I do have the monitor out of the truck um, and the CB out of the truck. So I need to find a place for the monitor somewhere that we can just put up while we're towing the RV. That way we can see what's behind the RV because the truck's got the cameras for everything else. I don't need that. Um, as far as the CB, eh, I'd probably not going to mount that. Might give that to my son, let him use it. Uh, we might try to find some kind of a handheld CB or something that gets good, decent reception inside the truck. Um, some people talked about those suction cup mounts and stuff. Um, no. Yeah, that that does some that does some damage to the paint. I mean, when you get a real strong suction cup pulling on that paint, and you've got all that heat and contraction going on with the metal all around it and underneath there that paint starts to bubble up flake up it does some weird stuff underneath there and uh, that's the last thing I want to have happen I, I don't want to mess with that so we may find an option that will work I don't know what that is right now but not the case but uh, yeah the truck um, is coming along and that's all I really wanted to talk about I had a lot of people that like I said, clicked on that thumbnail because it said something about old truck versus new truck, and they were all over me about that new truck ain't nothing like the old truck. Yeah, good old days. So we did get a, a pretty much base model. We don't need all the fancy stuff because that doesn't change the engine. Yeah, yeah. Um, we oh. don't need all the extra badges and yeah, uh, leather the, seats, the and chrome, and yeah. yeah, leather seats. We don't. Uh, who knows how long we're going to keep this? Yeah. This isn't going to be a long Yeah, term. yeah. I mean, it may be a long ter longer term than the last F250, but maybe not. Yeah, we don't know. We don't especially and I keep on alluding to it. Eventually that new engine's supposed to come out and will make its way into these trucks. And that is a huge game changer, especially if we're looking at, at a different RV. Um of course, we'll get a little bit bigger than what we have. I like keeping it small for the, us to be able to get into these parts. I'm working on him though. But Heidi slowly, <laughs> slowly chiseling me down. You guys have not seen. Go back and look. I think I made a playlist of RV shopping. <laughs> and go in and look at us talk. It doesn't make a difference what RVs we go look at. She's always saying, come look at this one. <laughs> and it's always 33, 35 foot. We're not going to get anything no, that big. Not. Definitely not getting anything that big. 30 foot? Maybe. Maybe. I don't want 30 foot. She knows I don't want 30 foot. Um, but 30 foot, maybe. Um, taller than what we currently have, obviously. We don't Much have taller? Uh, I don't necessarily want it, but maybe. <laughs> maybe um and it's not a big deal the truck's taller i mean we'll have more clearance underneath uh so anyways we just wanted to touch base and let you guys know that stuff um but yeah it's sunday so we're going to close this out i'm going to try to get this edited and hopefully you're watching this monday and uh yeah we're doing good we uh have been busy but it is winter so it's not like unfortunately 
what we get to normally do, mm. and that's camp. But we have not covered up the RV. No. Nope. So it could happen. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> I want to talk to you later. We'll leave that there <laughs> on that. And as always, hope to see you out there. Bye. Bye.